All right, if welcome back for the episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Thursday, November 2nd, 2023. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on CarnivoreTrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Going live with day trading tomorrow too. And we're going to be doing a uh, promotional rate until the 19th, so $39.99 to start. And then after that, it'll be... Uh, 100 a month there for that day trading room, but we're doing a promotion rate so everybody can try it out. Come check it out. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I'm very excited for that, and uh, it's been a long time coming. Anyways, let's get into it here. So markets here today, having a big gap and go. I talked about this this morning in the short, and you know at that point, markets are only up 1.3, and I talked about that 4,300 handle on the SPX, and we're actually above that right now. So the Gamma Boys really pushing this thing higher. The market just in squeeze mode and you know when you gap above and i talked about this morning when you gap above those moving averages um it kind of just it's easier to just do it in the overnight right if we have to if we uh gap if we open flat this morning this would have been very hard to get through this would have been very hard to get through uh, but they you know, essentially gapped it above you can see spx a little bit below but the spiders you see um sometimes that first opening spx print is a little funky but you can see on the spiders very clearly they gapped it right above the 20 and obviously the 200 so a gap and go day i talked about 4300 we got there the next level i said was you know 4325 in that range um you can see right now we're already we're already into that trend line here um and we're back testing that now i say 4325 for a couple of reasons one is if we kind of look we break this into a four hour um, you're going to see here, I'm kind of into that right now. So, you know, 4315, 4325, but this is kind of where we broke down from previously. You got the red bar. I'm looking at a four hour time frame. There's your pivot lows, and you got a couple more right up there. So, you know, even into 4340, but uh, beyond that, you know, again, if you just take a trend line from this pivot, you're going to see not too, you know, not too far to go to get into that level. And again, that coincides, you know, this is how charts tend to work, right? Kind of coincides with that October low, so that is a level of interest to watch. If you guys follow the spiders, you know it's 4:30 to 4:32, and again we're essentially right there, right? So there's that trend line. Extend it down, not that far away. This this trend line's a little skewed because of the spy dividend, um, but in, a, in any case, you get the idea. We're basically there. Um, there's that pivot on the four hour again. Could we <clears throat> could we trade up to 4:32? It's certainly possible. I think. Um, now we have NFP tomorrow. That's going to be a big deal, obviously, for the market. Um, I think the Fed already kind of knows what it's going to be. That's probably why they were a little more dovish yesterday. So don't be surprised if we see a softer print. It certainly could be a thing here. Um, the bond market, obviously, trying to sniff that out. I talked about that yesterday. I talked about it last week. The bond market's just grasping for any sort of good news that it can get here. And um, with that many shorts in, in the way... Uh, in any asset really you get any sort of good news it can cause a big bid and you've seen the zb continue higher here that is now confirmed above that 20 moving average you, know, you got to go all the way back to late august last time we were even above it but we have the higher lows and higher highs now um but in any case for the spiders for the spx here today i think if we gap higher tomorrow um you know, at least short term, probably a decent risk reward for a short uh, for some type of a pullback. This market is really stretched here in the short term. Um, you're basically talking about 4,100 here on the SPX to 4,315 um, in, you know, four and a half days. That's a gigantic move. So if we get some type of a, um, you know, euphoric gap up tomorrow, that's probably where this thing's going to stall out. And again, you know, I'm just looking at it probability based here. Um, 430, 432 trend line another trend line um, stretched so that's probably where we would look for a pullback in this market now it does look like more and more we talked about this the last couple of days um, the probabilities based um, you know the probabilities are saying that there is a some type of a major low in here um, there are wild cards out there still um, there is still Japan there's still you know I think at some point I, I'm, I know with some certainty <laughs> at some point that Bonds are probably going to start going up for the wrong reasons, and it, it might take the market a little while to figure that out. But right now, in the short term, the market likes it, and I do think this is a good pivot uh, to work off of possibly even a one that could last a few weeks, maybe even a few months. But in either case, in the immediate short term, market's really stretched, right? It's just it's really overbought here. Um, so where would we look for that 
to go. You know, we gap up tomorrow. That might start a pullback. Um, and then we'll see what we get next week. Next week will be pre-op X week. So we'll see probably some supportive supportive flows there. But in any case, pullback levels I'm watching, probably around 420 would be a good level here. If we look on the intradays, um, that was kind of where we broke out before the Fed. And if you just take a fib, interesting how that fake print never played out, by the way. Um, but you take a fib right up to here. You know, your 382 is 422, 50% is at 420. If we go up to 432, it's not that much different, right? So right in that 420 zone, probably a, a point of interest for me. Um, now, again, market's very stretched here. Um, so respect that. But those are the levels I'm watching. And big, big move there. Lots of shorts covering going on. And, um, you know, when you gap above those moving averages, it's kind of you know like i said it's a lot easier than if you had to trade through that and that's where you get that gap and go set up anyways uh, by the way apple of course how could i forget that's the wild card here after the close i don't think that's going to do anything to damage this this rally um i'll be covering that in the live stream with members after the close here but in any case um triple q's here getting a bit and again kind of going into a similar level here so there's your 50 moving average and if we break it down to a four hour you're going to see right here this is where we broke down previously there's your red uh, red bar breakdown and you had a few pivots right there we're kind of coming into that you know 100 ma on the four hour as well so again kind of getting a little rich here in the short term um market may need to do some backing and filling you've got a big gap here it's not very healthy um, but we'll look for a pullback here and definitely respect this tape market is strong and you know we're seeing pretty good base you know broad based rally for the most part i'm seeing banks up um energy wasn't that strong yesterday energy is strong today tech strong today um chips cloud everything's performing well even the transport's getting a bid so uh good move there uh we are into a little bit of resistance there on the queues russell 2000 even the russell <laughs> even the russell's green big fat gap there for the russell up two and a half that's its best day in a while and i was able to close above the 20 moving average uh or it should be able to by the end of the day here um, barring a pretty good decline, which I don't see. Um, but nonetheless, it's got a chance to confirm it tomorrow with a strong close on the weekly. So confirming with that two, uh, 20 moving average would be a step in the right direction for the IWM. Remember, we talked about double bottom that pierced and you're getting a bid off of that. So on the weekly, logical location for this to go, probably right back to that upsloping trend line, which is where we broke down from a few weeks ago. But Russell 2000, nice move there. Again, can't rule out some type of a pullback or a dip, maybe a flag. Um, but nice bid there for the IWM. Dow here getting a big bid. We talked about this 250 moving average. So, you know, 338, 339. Again, a gap higher tomorrow. Um, you're probably going to see some buyer exhaustion, right? So the same kind of deal here. 250 moving average big extension you know coinciding with the same level on the spiders that trend line uh the 50 ma and the q so market's a little rich here in the short term but um can't take anything away, anything away from this move it has been a solid one semiconductors as well up three percent on the day again 50 ma on the daily big outside move you're going to close above this red bar so that is a sign of strength near term um you know again maybe do some backing and filling but obviously this is your logical uh, target here for the SMH. If you can get through that, then 155, 156 is still going to be the big level to watch there on the daily time frame. IGV having a good day, still below this red bar high at 347. So just kind of stalling out a little bit, but you know, big gap here. And this has been a strong sector really all year. Um, you know, you had that outside move last week and it's holding up here. So we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. We talked about the monthly yesterday. We had a weekly breakdown. The monthly held up though. Um, so as long as it stays inside of that green, which is 336.87 on a monthly close, this could still be considered um, a bull pattern there. So IGV holding up okay. Um, again, maybe 350 you could get to in the near term. But again, a little bit of an extension here, 327, um, you know, pushing that 350 handle. So a lot of things getting a little overbought in the short run, but it is an impressive move. Dow Transports, uh, big winner on the day, up 2%. It is a little bit off the highs, nothing crazy. Um, still below all those moving averages, though. That's the that's the negative here. Um, but you now have plenty of space for a higher low. So you know maybe it comes back in and fills this gap. Um, but there's plenty of space now for a higher low. And if you can get that higher low, let's say fourteen thousand, maybe thirteen eight. If you can get that and get through that twenty moving average, kind of have like a zigzag. Um, you know fourteen seven fifty is going to be your next kind of big level back testing the two hundred, the fifty. So we'll be watching that there. The Jets finally 
finally getting off the ground. That's been a, an industry group that's just gotten torched here. And I'm underwater on some calls. Uh, they're going to expire worthless. Um, but this is a pretty good double bottom. I'm actually kind of waiting for pattern on this one. I might pick up some comments here. But in any case, um, transports here getting a bid. Like everything else, still got to get, still got a lot of work to do. But we are back above that trend line, so that's a positive. Um, interest rates here. All right, so we start off with a two-year. That got a little bit of a bid here. So the two, the short end, kind of getting a little bit of a bounce. No real problems here. Again, still no real problems on the weekly. Um, you're still holding trend here for the two-year. Um, it's the long end that's starting to get that bid, and I've talked about that recently. I said the long end probably needs to come in a little bit. Um, the two-year, or the, excuse me, the five-year pulling back, holding the 50 moving average, that's still holding trend, believe it or not. You could even make a case. You got a little trend line right there that the five-year is holding. So as long as it stays above that, this can still go higher, believe it or not. Um, and the 10-year, backing off, losing that 20, I think in the short term it wants that, you know, 4.53, 4.55 area, 30-year um, short term, 50 moving average, again, four points, uh 4.67, somewhere in that range. Ultimately, I do think it goes back down and tests 4.42. Um, that might require a bigger move in bonds, maybe some, some type of catalyst, but right now, pretty good pullback in yields. And bottom line, the market likes that. Interestingly enough, though, those yield curves, at least today, 210s coming back in a little bit. We talked about that, the uh, the short end holding up. There's a three-month tenure, but again, they are trending in the right direction. If they continue going higher, um, the market will probably like that in the short run down the line that could be a little bit of a different story if the data starts to really change but in the short run that could be a good catalyst for stocks anyways uh xhb here again up 2.38 look at this big gap here everything gapping up today um right in that 76 handle so i think i talked about that yesterday a little bit of a pivot there coming off the highs um again just a little extended in the short term 50 moving average will be a resistance it will need to consolidate to get through that if it does it can go to 78 um, if you roll over, you know, we'll look at around 72 and then there's the gap there at 70, 74. Those would be levels of interest for me. VNQ gap and go as well up 3.22. So this really needed it. We've been talking about this big outside move on the weekly. Um, I don't like what it did on the monthly, but you know, they're trying to defend it right now and we'll give it the benefit of the doubt, at least to, we'll say the 50 moving average. So right, right below that 77 handle. Um, and then, of course, that big trend line at 78, going back to the October low last year, that will be a major resistance level for the VNQ. XLF getting a bid up 2.15. Again, there's going to be a resistance up here. We talked about this. There's your 50 MA, 3350, um, 3375, 200, and then that uh, upsloping trend line right in that 34 handle. So those are the levels of watching XLF again. I don't know if it gets there in a straight line. If it gaps up tomorrow, it may have to pull back. Maybe a mini gap and crap type day. But banks are holding up much better. KRE all the way above 40 and all the way up to 42. So that is in much better shape here on a weekly time frame. That is holding up much better. KBE, same thing. So a lot of these things are starting to turn the ship a little bit here. Uh, broker, dealers, big pop, ready to go. 475. This one, for some reason, really likes my levels. Uh, but right to that 475 area installed out. Um, holding up okay if this flags we'll look at we'll call it 488 490 um, but it's got a flag here and consolidate if it does pull back we'll look around 460 um, for a higher low attempt but market's getting a broad base rally um, xle or i should say crude first then xle um, jumping ahead here holding that 100 ma that's your positive your negative is you're below this trend line again i still think crude is just in a range here i'm not really doing anything with it i don't see anything of interest um, you know if you get down to this area then it starts to get interesting interesting for a long in the mid to upper 70s um, if you start to shoot towards the mid 90s then it may be get interesting for a short but again it's kind of tough to do that with all the geopolitical stuff going on but um, again crude getting a little bit of bounce up 2.6 xle which we talked about earlier up two and a half that getting defended so nice move there for xle i can't do anything with this look at this move um, you know, 92 to 84, 84 to 92, 92 to 84, you know, I mean, I guess you could just trade the range, um, but I prefer a little bit more of a pattern there than just a ping pong, you know, short term, I guess I'll just say 90 here with that gap 
you do have the 50 MA, but these moving averages are all minor. XLE is in a range. I'm not touching it right now. XOP, decent bid there trying to curl back up. You know, you kind of kiss that 100 MA you're holding back up and, you know, back above those moving averages. So that's a positive. Again, we'll see if we can get back above that psychological 150 area OIH trying to put in a higher low. Um, so again, we talked about this yesterday. If, it's, if it goes sideways, it's not going to be good. Um, if it goes sideways for a couple more days, it could be setting up a bear pattern. And you got an outside move up today. So that's a sign of strength up two and three quarters. And you're reclaiming trend on the weekly. So again, above all the moving averages. And we'll give that the benefit of the doubt. Another big winner on the day, CCJ up 4%. You know, so this back you know, back to the FOMO trade for, for uranium, I guess. Um, I was in the camp. You got to do weekly backing and filling um, based on losing this green bar on a weekly close. Now, there's nothing to say that tomorrow we don't sell off and, and close back below 42.17. If we do, that could be a false breakout. So just be aware of that. My position on uranium and uranium stocks is the same as it's been for the last month and a half. If you own it, trail your stop. If you don't own it, do not chase it. That's it's really that simple. Um, I cannot justify buying something that's up from 27 to 42 uh, in a straight line, right? It's just I just can't do it. Um, your next level, I'm just going to say 45, right? So that's basically your pivot high going back to 2011. That's really the only thing I can give you there for CCJ, but it has been a powerhouse. Um, you are NM down three cents, but it's holding up okay. Um, there's still probably a lot of resistance at 48 to, to 49 though. Um, so really, kind of CCJ being the lead dog as usual. Um, Nat Gas, having a decent day there. Um, inside day, little pullback, big pop. Um, Tuesday, we had inventories today. It was basically a nothing burger and um, we're coming off the lows here, flat to positive. Um, nice inside pattern there. If this consolidates further, this is gonna have another advance towards the four handle. It's really that simple. Um, dollar index. So again, you'd think the dollar would be down a lot more. Um, and you know, it is down, it's down half percent back below the 20 moving average. But when I see, you know, what kind of pattern is this up move here and sideways, right? So the dollar index, um, I don't have any problems here on the weekly. If this consolidates another week, I would say this can go higher. Um, so we'll have to see dollar bears need to take this down. If they do, then I think the markets will really like that. But right now, there is nothing wrong with this pattern here on the DXY, and it's doing everything you'd want something to do um, after a big run for a continuation. It does need more time, though. Um, it's not ready to go just yet, but um, I, yeah, I just don't have any problems with this pattern. Now, you take out this pivot here. You take out 105.36 on a close. Um, you know, you break this trend line down, especially on a weekly. Then things can change. And then we'll look at, you know, 104.50 and 104 and, you know, 103. But right now, there's no problems with the dollar. And um, the market's rallying, I think, because the dollar's not advancing. And obviously, because bond yields are coming in. So again, it's not always a one-to-one -one perfect correlation. Uh, so just remember that. Uh, gold here hanging in there, okay. Nothing great, nothing terrible, up five bucks on the day. Let's not make too much out of it. It looks like a big, uh, big picture consolidation pattern, letting those moving averages catch up. Again, like I've said, if that happens, it can go to 2050. It's you know, really that cut and dry. Um, interestingly enough, you know, I guess bond yields coming down is good for gold, um, but it's also up on fear. And obviously there's, you know, judging by the equity markets, there's less fear. I mean, look at where we, you know, we just had a 300 point move off the lows in the spiders um, and gold's still holding up. So there is still geopolitical problems. Maybe that is telling us something, um, but gold hanging in there. Okay. Silver hanging in. Okay. As well. No problems. This could easily be a zigzag up but it's doing some consolidation and there ain't nothing wrong with that. Again, it's, it's funny how, you know, the gold, gold kind of looks not that different from the dollar here, sideways to up consolidation, silver sideways to up consolidation, um, and the dollar sideways to up consolidation as well. Platinum hanging in there. Okay. I'm going to give that the upside bias to 960. You guys know palladium still needs to go lower and so does copper here, but that's having a decent day right now. Uh, Bitcoin here still holding up. Um, Actually made a new high overnight, I believe, and it came back in. So just back below 35,000. Again, just like CCJ, I can't chase it here. Like, you, you know, you're up 30% here in, in a few weeks. Um, it's got to either consolidate or pull back. But right now it's hanging in there. Okay, some of the alts are doing a lot better. I know Solana um, had that big run there. 
all the way up into that, uh, what was it, the yeah, $45 level. And it is pulling back a lot of resistance up here. But um, yeah, so some of the alts starting to act a little bit better. XRP with a nice, nice uptick. Uh, Cardano, you know, 24 cents to 32. So big move there. Uh, but Bitcoin hanging in there and crypto starting to wake up. Again, maybe it is a sign that um, market is going a little bit more risk on here. All right, lastly, um, let's just check the spiders really quick. Um, so again, don't forget Apple after the bell. Again, it's not going to negate this rally. Um, and the reason why I would give the market yesterday, it was like I said, 60, 40. Um, it's a lot higher than that, that this is a major pivot. Why? Because they would not have let us, you know, done this long enough to know um, if this was going to be a bear move, there's going to be a bear move after this, they would not have let us close below both, close above both of those moving averages. That's a big deal. Um, so that is a significant move today. Also significant that we had the move yesterday on volume. So that is a sign of strength for the market. That said, short term, um, you know, you're really stretched here. Again, like I said, 409.21 to 430.52 in four days. It's a big move. Market needs to take a breather. There is resistance here. Um, again, just like I said with CCJ and everything else, don't chase it up here. Just trail your longs um, if you're holding. Um, and wait for a pullback if you're looking to get in. But again, we'll see about that if and when we get there. Remember, NFP tomorrow, market may gap up on Euphoria, and uh, that could be a, an opportunity to sell some gains here in the short term. But um, big picture, market is holding up well, and uh, looks pretty good um, for a possible little seasonal rally that everybody's been waiting for in November. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up here. You guys take care. Come find me on ConvertTrades.com. I'll talk to you guys all tomorrow.